strength of an experience is the mindset it creates in you. I'll say that again. The strength of an experience is the mindset it creates in you. I hear that some of us are seeing and looking at 2024 with the mindset that the experiences in 2023 gave you. Well, you heard the word of the Lord. 2024 is not a continuation of 2023. How many of us have goals here for 2024? You've written down or you've documented some goals. <laughs> if you documented those goals with the mindset of the experiences you've had in 2023, I came here to tell you you are wrong. What God is set to do in our midst in 2024 is unprecedented. And it's starting tonight. And that's why you cannot miss tonight. This is an admonition and a plea from a brother to you. You cannot miss tonight. You see, do you know who a man of God is? A man of God is someone who God uses to establish his will on the face of the earth. And I'm so glad that in this house, we have a true man of God. Someone who God uses and will use for us tonight. You see, understand this, understand this. You can pull out anything from pastor tonight. Anything. Just anything. Don't get too familiar with the grace that he carries. You see him every Sunday preach. You might even know him closely talk just about Chelsea, Arsenal, Man U and all of that. Don't get too familiar with the grace that he carries. Tonight is not one of those ordinary nights. It's a unique night. And you must be prepared to receive all that God has for you. So you cannot miss tonight and do not come alone. You've written down goals for 2024. Powerful. But you see, like I said, 2024 is not a continuation of 2023. Hope you did not define those goals through the experiences that you've had in 2023. Tell somebody, enlarge your capacity. Tell somebody else, enlarge your capacity. Can you, can you walk up to five people and preach to them? Tell them, enlarge your capacity. Enlarge your capacity. Enlarge your capacity. Enlarge your capacity to receive. Enlarge your capacity. Hallelujah. You may please be seated. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 17. Matthew 9, 17. Jesus speaking says, Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine, somebody say new wine, into new bottles, and both are preserved. Do not be like the Israelites. Going into 2024 with the mentality of 2023. Most of us, if not all of us, we've been involved these last few weeks in a lot of sacrificial giving. You've given so much. And I came to tell you this afternoon that in God's kingdom, what precedes or succeeds giving is receiving. You've given sacrificially. The next thing that God is opening us to is receiving all that he has. But you see, receiving is done intentionally in the kingdom. In the first and second services, 
get the messages. I spoke to us about different ways to receive from God. And I dwelt on expectation. I perceive that in this service, I want to just tell you, enlarge your capacity. Ah, enlarge your capacity. There is this wonderful song. Fill my cup, Lord. I bring it up to you, Lord. Come and quench the testing of... As, as pious and religious and holyly, that song sounds. The truth is this. If you bring a cup to God, He will fill it. If you bring a basin to Him, He will fill it. If you bring a tanker to Him, He will fill it. If you connect a pipe to the ocean, it will keep getting filled. Your capacity defines and determines how much you take away from God. In 2024, do not pity God. Enlarge your capacity to receive from God. Enlarge your capacity. You know, in 1 Corinthians, or Chronicles rather, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, the Bible tells us a story about a man by the name Jabez. You know, 1 Chronicles chapter 4. The Bible says, and Jabez, from verses, I think, 9, thereabout, it says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. He says, and his mother called his name Jabez because his mother bare him in sorrow. So even though Jabez was more honorable, his experiences in life was being defined and marked by sorrow. It wasn't, ex Jabez's experiences were not what he wanted. They were not in alignment with God's will for Jabez's life. Jabez came to pray to God. And hear what Jabez said. Verse 10. Jabez said, he called unto the God of Israel. He says, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. How? Read the next part with me. And what? Enlarge my coast. Enlarge my coast. That's how Jabez prayed. He says, enlarge my coast, that thine hand might be mighty with me. And thou wouldest keep me from evil. And that it may not grieve me. And hear what the Bible says. He says, and God granted him his request. Now, in case you do not understand what Jabez prayed, let's go to Isaiah chapter 54. You begin to read again, Isaiah 54, verses of, from verses 1. The Bible says that sing, O barren. So, you wanted to bear fruit at a particular level and it was not happening. In the first and second service, I, I explained that in the kingdom of God, understanding reigns. Understanding defines and determines the level of experiences you would have. I explained that from the book of Matthew chapter 13, verses 8 tells us that talking about the parable of the sower. He says somebody sowed on good ground. So the ground was good. The ground was not the problem. He says sowed on good ground, but the experiences were different. Somebody had 30 fold. Somebody had 60 fold. Somebody had 100 fold. And then Jesus tells us why in verses 23 of the same Matthew 13. That the difference between the person who has 30, 60 and 100 is understanding. Amen. Now, with that thought in your mind, now we go back to Isaiah. So, you can, barrenness does not necessarily mean maybe not having any child at all. So, that can be a level of barrenness. Barrenness can be you are not fruitful in your job. You started a business, the business seems it's not that, like not moving forward. You've done everything you think you know to do, but things are not working out the way you want it to be. Some of you are thinking and saying, yeah, this is the same spot I was in life. In uh, January, um, December 30, 31st, 2022, this is where I am. 2023, this is still where. What will happen in 2024? Well, I will tell you what will happen in 2024. The Bible says, see and go barren. He said, that's the first thing. Rather than getting, start complaining, sit down and begin to sulk and begin to think about 2024 and begin to define your expectations of 2024 through the lenses of your experiences in 2023 and said, is this how I'll be going? Is this how things will be? He said, begin to sing, first of all. Begin to sing. Begin to sing. It takes a level of joy to begin to sing. Let me explain something to you. When you talk about joy in God, there are expressions. The first expression is singing. The second expression is laughter. The third expression is dancing. So begin to sing begin to dance begin to laugh and he says sing that thou, thou did, that did not bear he says break forth into singing and cry aloud thou that did not travail with child he says for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife say the lord verse 2 i like this verse verse 2 says 
Enlarge the place of thy tent. I don't know. Are you reading this verse with me? He says, enlarge. Whose responsibility is it to enlarge the place of your tent? Uh, you see, any gospel that places all the responsibility on God is not the true gospel. He says, enlarge the place of thy tent. Let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. Verse 3, I like this one. He says, for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, the nations, and make desolate cities to be inhabited. Meaning you will redefine your experiences. How? By enlarging your capacity to receive from God. Hallelujah. Enlarging your capacity to receive. Enlarge your capacity. Don't let 2023, your experiences, we thank God for it, but don't let it define. A loved one died in 2023. I mean, maybe 2024 is the year. It's not the year. Let me tell you what will happen to you in 2023. Four, rather. Go to Amos chapter 9. That is what will happen. Pastor Tutu read it a while back. This is what will happen in 2024. This is your experience. He says, I saw the Lord. No, 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 no. Verse 13. He says that, behold, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. I don't know if you understand what this means. It means, you see, a plowman is the person who is still making ridges. He's just sowing seed. He said, you're just sowing seed. He says that person who is sowing seed shall overtake the person who is already in the harvest season. He says, and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. Now, if you might not understand it very well, let's go to the message translation of the Bible. Same verse and same chapter. Now, the message as well says it this way. Yes, indeed. It won't be long now. It says God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast. Ah. Oh. Things are going to happen so fast. You see, in 2024, things are going to happen so fast. The plowman shall overtake. You've sown seeds. Sacrificial seeds. Hey, somebody has gone through natural law, has done the necessary things, they've invested rightly, you know, they've sown, they've worked hard for many years, they've built this business, they've done all of these things. He says, you that just showed up in the scene, you will just show up and your result will be the person who just, who has been there for many years, will say, ah, what's happening here? I will tell you what's happening, grace is happening here. He's, he says... He says things are going to happen so fast your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. I like that part. Ah, ah, hey, 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 hey. He says you won't be able to keep up. He says everything will be happening at once. Ah, oh my God. So it is not family will be fine now. Then what happens? Hey, the business is not doing well. Oh yeah, let's go attack business. Um, okay, the business is not doing well. Ah, then you look at it. Oh, my job. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. He says everything will be happening at once. This is peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. This is it. This is it. He says, and everywhere you look, blessings. Everywhere you look, blessings. He says, like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. This is your experience in 2024. Enlarge your capacity to receive it. Joel chapter 2, please. Joel chapter 2, from verses 23. I want us to read it. Joel chapter 2, from verses 23. He says, no, no, don't give me the message. Give me the King James. Now, the Bible says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. Ah, uh, no, no, no. I'll read it again. I'll read it again. Be glad then, ye children of HOG, and rejoice in the Lord your God. Why? Why? He says, For he had given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain. In the first, that means from the first month, from January, from January, from January. God, God is not going to wait till December. From January. He says he's giving you the former. That means has anything good happened to you in the past? Has anything good happened to somebody you know about? Have you read from the scriptures about any good thing? He says he will bring that one. Anything that is even in the future. Even if he has never done it for anybody else. If you are going to be the first person. He says he will bring it from January. From January. From January. Verse 24. 
He says, and the floor shall be full of wheat, and fat shall overflow. Hey, hey, this, this should be your language in 2024. Overflow. I'm telling you, overflow in every dimension. Money overflow. Dollars overflow. Health overflow. Every dimension overflow. Promotions overflow. So, I mean, you come to God and you say, ah, let's thank God. Though. They promoted me double promotion. This, this, this. Somebody cut it. Somebody cut it. Say, let's thank God. Double promotion. This, this is January now. Double promotion. As you are going back, February, you come again. Another double promotion. You come back again. You say, ah, 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 ah. Um, um, saints, please help me thank God. You see, another double promotion. See, it gets to a point where the blessing would be too obvious for anybody to ignore. Verse 25. He tells us what he's going to do and how he's going to do this. Ah, he says, I will restore the years that the locust had eaten. Restore. Restore. Go to verse 26. Then I will come back and explain something about restore. He says, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who had dealt wondrously with you he says and my people shall never be ashamed hallelujah he says I will restore the years let me explain something can, can, can I have five brothers any five, five brothers come any from anywhere five brothers please very quickly can you come on stage I would restore the years let me explain to you what restore the years mean any brother, thank you, thank you, God bless you, thank you, sir. Can you just stand, stand, hallelujah, good, good. Can you face this direction? Can you face this direction? Hallelujah. Now, this is 2020, what? This is 2024. Don't worry, <laughs> this is 2021, 2022, 2023. This is 2024 for another person. Now, for you. This is what restore the years mean. Ideally, where you should be in terms of your experiences, right, is at this level. So this person has labored for years. All through the year, he worked hard. He worked hard. He invested. He did different things. So he arrived, he's arriving in 2024 knowing that, ah, 2024 will be good. Why? Because I have done all of these things. God is saying, uh, in my technology, in my kingdom, I will take you. Now, if, if, if you were to look at it from the natural standpoint of view, you don't stand a chance against this person. But you see, restore the years mean, okay, you wasted 2021. What you were supposed to have been experienced in 2022, it didn't happen. 2023, it didn't happen. He says, you know what? In 2024, I'll just fast track everything. I'll carry you. That is what restore the years. Thank you, sir. Thank you, yeah. That is what restore the years mean. All of the experiences, God just carries it, puts it together, and carries you. When you look at yourself, and you look at the people that have labored and done all of those things, you look at it and say, what's the difference? Grace is the difference. The person will be wondering that how did it happen so fast for you? But there is something at work. Something at work. Grace is at work. Grace is at work. I will restore the years. I will restore the years. Now listen to me, listen to me. I said any gospel that places all the responsibility on God is a false gospel. You see, there are things that God would require you to do. One of such is what I am telling you today. Enlarge your capacity. Now how do you enlarge your capacity? Psalm 78 verse 41. As I began to close. Psalms 40, 78 rather, verse 41. The Bible says, talking about the children of Israel, he says, yeah, they turned back and tempted God. And they did what, saints? Can you read it with me? They limited the only one of Israel. I have a message for you today, and it's very simple. You might have heard it before, but I bring it to you prophetically. In 2024, do not limit God. Don't limit God. 
expand your capacity to receive from him. Do not limit God. In 2024, don't limit God. This night, don't limit God. It is an advice. Don't limit God. Because God can do anything. He can make a slave wake up a slave and sleep as the prime minister in Egypt. God can do anything. He can and look at a lady who is an ordinary citizen and make her sleep as the queen of the most powerful kingdom on earth. Ask Esther. Do not limit God. He can take five loaves and two fishes and use it to feed more than 12,000 people. And 4,000 people, 10,000, do not limit God. You can enter into 2024 with thousands in your account and end year with billions. Don't limit God. Don't limit God. I mean, when you see me December 31st, 2024, and you see me living in billions and living a good life and in health, don't blame me. I did not limit God. Don't limit God, saints. Don't limit God. It is a warning. Don't let the obstacles that are before you make you begin to limit God. Take out all the obstacles and allow God to do in your life what only Him can do. You've sowed seed. There is seed in the ground, saints. And God respects sacrifices. There is seed in the ground. Receive all that he has for you. Don't limit God. Don't limit God. I wish there is a way I can say it stronger. Don't limit God. Expand your capacity to receive from him. And I can assure you, we will all see him come here. Of course, mercy seat. Not here, here. Mercy seat. And be giving God glory. Because we will be very different people. He would have done mighty, mighty things through us. And then we would expect him to do something else in 2025. Can you jump on your feet this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't limit God. Don't limit God. Expand your vision to receive all that God has for you. Hallelujah. This night... Do not miss it. I want you to preach to your neighbor. Don't miss tonight. Come with expectation. God's servant is ready. God is ready. Be ready. To receive. All that God. Has for you. In Jesus precious name. Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to implore you now to give your heart to Christ. And by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously, he has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. I accept your finished work right now and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.